Duval, what's up? It's your boy Ruben. You know what it is. Had to go ahead and hit y'all with the emergency video because, oh, happy day, Josh Allen signed long term, five years, 150 million, 88 million guaranteed. I believe he's the fourth highest paid defensive player in the league. And um, I am thrilled, right? thrilled let, let, let me give you guys for those of you that don't know what it's like being fans of the jacksonville jaguars we i believe in the last i think it was stated last 14 ish years this is only i think our third first round pick that that we've re-signed Beyond their rookie season, <laughs> it, it's been that bad. And one of them was Blake Bortles. It's been that bad. I, I have a Leonard Fournette jersey that lasted me a year because we got rid of him. It's been that bad. And I literally, Josh Allen is literally my favorite Jaguar. I wanted to get a jersey from him, but I've been so jaded by the way the Jaguars have done business over the years that I, I held off because... I don't know who's going to be with the team long term. So I fully expect to go ahead and get me a, a Josh Allen Jaguars jersey, knowing now he is a building block for this team. Now, the structure of the contract wasn't really disclosed. I don't know if it's front loaded, back loaded. Um, I would imagine it's back loaded. Uh, be only because that seems to be what we've been doing with um, all the free agent signings. A lot of those deals were backloaded because some of you guys were wondering how we were able to sign X amount of people when we had limited uh, cap room. Um, and it's because he signed a lot of people. They're making very little in the first year. Now, I don't know if that's the way to go. Uh, I, when you're building a team, I'm not a fan of backloading contracts unless they're you know, long-term deals of guys that you expect to be here a long time. That, but, you know, I don't want to backload. Con the reason for not wanting to backload contracts is because if it goes bad, you want to be able to get out of those contracts easy. When you backload a contract, the contract goes up in value with each year, making them harder to cut with each passing year. Um, so when they say like, oh, this guy sound, uh, signed a three-year deal, but he he has an out after two years. That just literally means, okay, they paid him a lot up front. So after two years, his cap hit was, will be minimal. So I would imagine Josh Allen's um, either an even kind of contract where it's, it's relatively the same number each year or it's, it's backloaded. Um, if it's front loaded, even better. I, I just highly doubt it because of the way they've been maneuvering the cap situation. But he was set to make 24 million this year uh, on the franchise tag. So who knows? We'll wait and see on that. Now, little the 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 little bit of of negative because I don't want <laughs> you know I want to give both sides of the coin here. Obviously, right? So I think. Nobody's more deserving of that money than Josh Allen. He's come here. He's worked. He's uh, he's busted his ass and done it the right way. He's been nothing but class. He's been stating since day one he was, he's wanted to stay a Jaguar for life. Um, he's done it the right way. Even when I feel like he's been disrespected, he still responded with class. He just voiced his displeasure, but it, it wasn't, he didn't bash the team. He didn't, you know, it was typical, like, you know what, I'm just unhappy kind of, you know, talks, right? Uh, and I don't blame him. The fact that he had to play on a fifth-year option, which me personally, I didn't agree with. The fact that they refused to negotiate throughout the season when it was clear he was having a bang-out season, I would feel disrespected. And then the fact that I think I think just they just started negotiations within the last month, I would feel disrespected. Like you would think that you'd want to get that deal done. And Trent Baalke, I still maintain, dropped the ball on this. So, I, you know, him dropping the ball on this affected not just the signing of Josh Allen, which now we paid him probably $5 million more per year than he, than, than he would have gotten. I fully believe we could have got Josh Allen at 25 per um, at the at the end of last season, beginning of this year, or even throughout. I think 25 per would have been the going rate for him. But you made him play it out. 
he bet on himself and he won. And now you had to pay the 30 mil, which, uh, which was only exacerbated by Brian Burns' contract. He signed, I believe, a five year, $141 million deal. I think with, in, with, uh, in, if he hits like all his incentives, I believe he can get up to 150. And he had 87.5, um, guarantee. So we knew we were going to have to top that. He had better numbers than Brian Burns. Um, for those of us that don't fully understand or, or think that, cause I see some people go, well, make him prove it again. It, and, and no disrespect. I feel like those are casual fans. And the reason I say that is because you look at the sack numbers and you go, why does he deserve it? Right? So if, and I stated this before, Trent Baalke had a good analytics department he would have knew that he was worth this money. And the reason I say that it is, so he had the 10 and a half sack season as a rookie, right? Now, that's very good. Then I think he had a couple of injury plagued years, um, but he still had, you know, six, seven and a half sacks, things like that. But in the last two years, he's been top 10 in pressures, okay? Which I think is even more important than sacks. Now, sacks is, is obviously the end all be all. He got there. But the fact that he's in the top 10, and last year he, last year he was in the top five. The year before, he was in the top eight. I believe he was seventh the year before. You could have seen this coming. So if that was a consistent number that, that you could see coming, an analytics department should have told him, hey, if his number is this and he's one of us, like he shouldn't. I respect making players play on the fifth-year option, right, unless – it's something you can kind of see coming, right? So it's almost like dealing in bad faith because those analytics scream the sacks were coming, right? That just, that, now, for those of us who don't understand what pressures are, that basically means he was in the backfield affecting the quarterback. He just didn't get home and get the sack for whatever reason. The quarterback might have stepped up, um, but it doesn't, you know, you don't know how many times that probably affected the play. Um, he, they didn't get the completion. They didn't, you know get the playoff. Those are things that don't go into the sack numbers when you're negotiating. But as a GM, if you were smart, you should have signed them. Five million less per year. And if you would have done that, we would have had the franchise tag, probably keep Ridley. Now you're in a situation where you're kind of in scramble mode with the wide receiver situation. We just signed Gabe Davis. I think we're fine, ultimately, if they don't go receiver. But this is a deep draft for receiver. But it, it changes the way you go into the draft. And this is ultimately the knock on Trent Bulky is, yeah, it's easy to sign free agents. But I have criticized his drafting because it's always reactionary, right? So we ended up with Anton Harris. But you kind of knew that you might lose Cam Robinson, Juwan Taylor. Like that, that, that was something you should have already had planned for. So you could have drafted the best available player and then subsequently continue to draft best available player. Now, instead of drafting positions of need, like wide receiver, corner safety, things like that, you're, you're, you're in this cycle of replacing guys that you should have already had a plan for. So that's where my issue with Trent Baalke always is. And I was getting a really bad feeling with no deal on the horizon, at, at least that we could see uh, until this morning. That was I was starting to get a really bad feeling because I wanted this deal done before the draft because if we got into the draft and Josh Allen wasn't signed and somebody falls, I didn't want Trent Baalke to have the ammo to, to try to get greedy and go, hmm, maybe I can move up in the draft and pick this guy, that guy on the third. Or if, a, if somebody like Jarrett Verse falls and you go, hmm, let me draft him and then trade. Josh Allen for other compensation like that was the concern for me because at the end of the day basically these drafts have been lateral moves we're not getting better through the draft we're literally we're just moving laterally by replacing players that we should either have had on the roster or planned for now we are assured of a building block that is Josh Allen assured right now who's next is it Trevor is it Tyson is it Cisco you know, I, I love that we just have somebody that we can call our own now. We have a star we can call our own now that's going to be here. We have somebody we can actually build around. And instead of 
reacting, we're now building on top of instead of replacing. So that's just what I got, guys. I'm thrilled. Let me know what you guys think in the chat, in the comments. I'll be looking, answering questions. If you guys got any questions, check out the next video. I might answer them there, or I might even answer them in the comments. Doesn't matter. Keep rocking with your boy. I appreciate y'all. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Peace.